I'm overweight. I have excess belly fat. Will I use Ozempic for weight loss? Never. And some of you probably shouldn't as well. Now, if you don't have diabetes and take Ozempic, you might end up wishing you'd been bitten by a Gila monster instead. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome back this week. I know I have been missing in action for over two weeks. Uh, now, part of the reason is that I've been busy working out and managing my weight with proper diet and exercise. Uh, Thanks to many celebrities and prescribers, so many people are talking about using Ozempic or semaglutide for weight loss. Now, even the user does not have type two diabetes or other weight-related comorbid conditions. Now, a viewer also asked me to weigh in on this drug. So, let's first. Make it clear that who are the candidates for using Ozempic's active ingredient semaglutide for treating diabetes and/or weight loss. All right. So semaglutide at 0.5 and one and two milligrams are formulated in the brand name Ozempic. Now, the FDA approved indication of Ozempic is as an adjunct to diet and exercise to improve glycemic control or blood glucose control and cardiovascular health in adults with type two diabetes. Now, on the other hand, there is a different type of semaglutide. Semaglutide at two point four milligram is formulated under a different brand name. Called Wegovy. Now, the FDA-approved indication for Wegovy is for adults and teenagers with an initial body mass index or BMI of more than or equal to 30 kilogram per meter square, that defined as obesity, or 20 more than more than or equal to 27 kilogram per meter square. That means overweight. Now, with at least one weight-related comorbid condition, such as high blood. Uh, Pressure, type two diabetes, or cholesterol problems. So, why should people not use semaglutide when they are not indicated? I'm going to give you five reasons. So, ready for the first reason? So, the first reason is that there is no direct randomized control trial. Now, listen, from a legal standpoint, Wegovy and Ozempic are two different drugs under two different brand names from the FDA standpoint. So if a person takes the Ozempic for weight loss, that is an off-label indication without the support of randomized controlled trial data. Well, I know you're going to say that. There are plenty of story of people losing weight on Ozempic with or without diabetes. But remember, if people without diabetes takes Ozempic, they are on their own with the risk. So, what are the risk? Let's take a look. The most common and unbearable side effect of taking Ozempic weekly are vomiting. Fatigue, headaches, and stomach cramp. Now, the reason for all these unpleasant side effects is that Ozempic is a synthetic version of a hormone, exandin four, found in the saliva of the Gila monster, a venomous lizard native to the southwestern United States and northwestern Mexico. Now, when Gila monster bites its prey. The exandin four in its venom enters the prey's bloodstream and begins to stimulate insulin secretion from the pancreas, which can lower the prey's blood glucose sugar level. Now, this effect can be beneficial for the Gila monster as it may take it easier for the lizard to digest its prey's tissue, which are high in sugar and other nutrients. 
that the mechanisms of uh, exanding four to lower blood glucose was exploited nearly two decades ago when the FDA first approved the first drug of its class, Bayer or exanatide in 2005. Then Victoser liraglutide was approved in 2010 as the first human GLP-1 analog that mimics the actions of GLP-1, a human version of the hormone exanatide or the hormone exanatin-4. All right. So while Ozempic is not derived directly from the Gila monster saliva, it is based on a molecule that was first discovered in this animal, and the true actions of Ozempic is to lower blood glucose by increasing insulin levels. And this is useful in treating type 2 diabetes because diabetes patients have lower sensitivity in insulin and a high insulin level can help better control their blood sugar level. But when boosting insulin levels in people without diabetes can lead to hypoglycemic or low blood sugar conditions. Now, the weight loss effect of Ozempic is actually the secondary effect. Let's take a look here. A GLP-1 is a hormone released by the intestine to in response to food, and it stimulates the insulin secretion from the pancreas, reduce glucagon secretion, and slows down gastric emptying. And by slowing down gastric emptying, users would feel full and eat less, so comes the weight loss. Now, but when your stomach is not emptying, the GI is not moving down or you having reduced peristalsis. When GI is not moving down, there is a tendency to move up, which cause nausea and vomiting that can be severe for some users. The Ozimbric also carry a black box warning, which is the strongest type of warning issued by the US FDA. The black box warning for Ozimbic relates to the risk of thyroid cancer. Specifically, the warning states that in studies involving rodent or mouse and rat, semaglutide, the active ingredient in Ozimbic, caused a type of thyroid cancer called C-cell tumor. While it is not clear whether semaglutide causes thyroid cancer in humans, the FDA recommends that Ozempic be used with caution in people with a history of medulla thyroid carcinoma or in people with multiple endocrine neoplasma syndrome type 2. All right, so if that is not enough of a risk, let's hear the third reason. Well, Ozempic will make you weak. Ozempic will make its user lose muscle mass. All right. A subgroup data from the step one study, Rigovi Semaglutide's primary clinical trial looked at 95 people who were on the drug and 45 people who received a placebo. The researchers conducted scans on all participants to monitor their body mass index. Now, participants who received the drug lost an average of 10.4% of their fat mass and 6.9% of their lean body mass. And participants who received the placebo lost an average of 1.2% of their fat mass and 1.5% of their lean body mass. Now, when users solely relying on using Ozempic to lose weight without increasing resistance training, the loss in muscle mass is actually bad, or very bad, for metabolic health. Now, notice that the clinical trial for this uh, drug, for Rigovi semaglutide 2.4 milligram once weekly, was plus, was with lifestyle intervention. So without lifestyle intervention, there is no clinical data to support it, no clinical trials to support that. Remember, using the lower dose of Ozempic without changing lifestyle for weight loss is not evidence-based medicine. All right, is there enough reason for you to not use? There's more. All right, there's more. Let's look at the fourth reasons. Now, 
it makes you look sick and all suddenly, right? Okay, so why is that? When a user wants to lose weight fast, Ozempic works well. Perhaps it works too well, too fast that the skins of the its user, ah,、uh, is become sagging. This is related to losing both muscle and fat under the skin. The rapid weight loss will cause skin sagging and loss of elasticity, especially if people aren't exercising and getting appropriate nutrients. And there's one more reasons for you not. To use if it is not indicated, well, abusing Ozempic is breaking the medical system. I'll tell you why. Now, for people who are counting on losing weight by only using once weekly Ozempic, chances are they will be on the drug forever, forever. Here is that the reason. Now, study have shown that when people stop using Ozempic. Many regain some of the weight they have lost, so they will be keep seeking the drug for as long as they want to manage their weight through the drug alone. Now, using Ozempic without the true indications also puts diabetes patients at risk of not getting the drug to treat their conditions. It is already causing a drug shortage for diabetes patients. But there is more. Even more alarming is that. According to this recent Business Insider article, some people in the U.S. have started buying Ozempic from Canada and Mexico at lower prices. Canadian government is now banning Americans from buying Ozempic in Canada to protect their diabetes patients. Now, honestly, I feel so ashamed that Americans are causing drug shortages in our neighboring countries. Managing a healthy weight is essential, but it is unethical to burden people who need the drug to manage their disease. I want to wrap up this talk with a personal note, and you saw I showed a picture of my body for a reason, because I'm overweight and I have not been at my ideal weight for more than ten years. And I'm gonna show you this now. With the pandemic lockdown, I even reached the lower end of obesity for more than a year. You know, you ask me, sure, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight fast. Could I have taken Ozempic? Sure. As a pharmacist and a pharmaceutical scientist, I've known the weight loss effect of Ozempic and other GLP-1 analog for. Over a decade, but the thought of using these drugs to lose weight without diabetes has never crossed my mind because I know the risk, and I know Ozempic and drugs alike are a quick fix, and rather than a true remedy for weight loss. This is why I have embarked on my weight loss journey this year with traditional diet. Nutrition management and physical activities, and here is me in November. I've lost a little bit, and at the beginning of this year, I was at two hundred and two pound with a BMI of twenty nine point seven. So a little bit below over、uh, obesity, but it's still at the higher end of overweight. And here is me. Uh, just very recently, a couple of days ago, March thirty first, my BMI went down to twenty seven point nine. Now it is nothing to be, you know, to show off. You know, I'm not muscular in any way, but I've lost some. All right. Now with diet and nutritional management and physical activities, I have lost six percent. Of my body weight in twelve weeks, which is not too shabby compared to an average of ten point six percent weight loss from injecting semaglutide at two point four milligram weekly for twenty weeks, according to their step four study. All right, so I know I'm not at my weight loss goal yet, and I'm by no means physically very fit. But I'm on my way, and I have my goal set with diet 
and exercise and nutritional management. Well, anyway, I can certainly share more of my weight loss journey and story in future videos if that's something you want to hear from me. My bottom line message of this video is that I want everyone who is watching this video or following my channel to use as few drugs as possible. And that is the way to live a healthier life. Okay, very long video. I'm Dr. Hong, and thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again in my next video. Take good care. Bye.